I was sent a bunch of pens to review by Kale, and this is one of them, and I'm very grateful for this, because this is the Jinhao 500, and I have received a lot, and I mean a lot, of requests to review this pen. And I think that's because Jinhao pens typically look pretty well, they're usually pretty nicely made, and often, in my experience, they write quite well. The X450 and X750 are well known, uh, a lot of people like those, and I think they're cool pens. But today we'll talk about the 500, which definitely looks cool. Okay, let's talk about the parts of the pen, then I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. The first thing that struck me when I looked at this pen was it's a bit pelican-like. It has the, the, the end of the uh, cap here is a little bit like a pelican pen, I thought, and also this end, which looks like a piston turning knob, is pelicanish. But it's not an actual piston filler, nor is it a pelican. The top of the cap, finial, black with a gold ring, then you have a clip. Often these clips are very tight, and this one's no exception. They're almost unusable. You really have to stretch them out a bit to make them usable. You have these three, I don't know, rivet type blobs there, don't really have a function. You have the cap, you have the center band that says Jin Hao on one side and 500 on the other, and then you have this barrel, which I kind of liked. I think it's a pretty nice material. And then you have the end flat, uh, definitely not a piston turning knob. The cap comes off really easily on this one, uh, but it does post very securely. Then you have the section, tapered, bit of gold cap lip there, I would say number five nib, and a uh, uh, feed, and the nib is two-tone, it says Jin Hao, and it says 18 kgp for 18 karat gold plating. Unscrew the barrel, and you find a standard Jin Hao converter. You can also put in a standard international cartridge if you want, and I think... Well, yeah, no, 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 you should definitely be able to get away with putting a second one in the barrel if you like that as a spare. All right, uh, there is a bit of a step down at the barrel there, but it's very minor. I don't even think it's a full millimeter, and it is a little sharp though, but it's not terrible. The section is big enough to hold it so that you don't really feel that. It's a slip cap, so there are no threads. It's pretty nice. Um, I found this uh, pen to run fine. No, no issues. I always do a full page of writing uh, before I review the pen. It didn't run dry, uh, it didn't really skip, so it's a, a pretty nice nib. And I have also seen the same Jin Hao nib on another pen that did skip, so you never really know, but on this one <clears throat> it worked fine. Uh, a metal cap and barrel, which means that you cannot really convert this to an eyedropper fill pen easily. I do get a lot of questions about that, so I thought I would just point that out. Whoops, I dropped it. Um, and that's pretty much all there's to it. What can I say about the size of the pen? Well, it's a decent size, and if you post it, it becomes fairly ridiculous size, and also very top-heavy because of all the metal. That's something I don't really like so much, but what I do like is that if you absolutely have to post, which some people do, it posts very securely. This pen will not fall out easily. That's very cool. I liked the section. It is a, not really rubberized, but it is a hard plastic that has it's matte plastic and it gives a decent grip. I won't really, I wouldn't really call this textured, but it's nice. I like the fact that it writes well. For a pen at this price point, of course, every pen should write, but sometimes you buy something that skips a lot, it's very dry. With this pen, I had no issues. And I like the looks. It really is a decent looking pen, I would say, for the price that you pay for these, which is typically something like $10, $15, something like that from China. That's not bad at all. Things I don't like so much, well, as I said, the posting is a little bit ridiculous with such a, a shallow posting and a fairly big cap, but if you have to, you can do it. It's also very secure, and I don't really have a lot of complaints about the pen. I think it's a decent performer, and this would definitely be a cool knockabout pen that you should not be ashamed to bring into a business meeting, because it looks nice, it looks classic, I have no issues with it. So, Carla, thanks a lot for sending me this. Um, I have a few measurements and then we'll do a writing sample. The weight in all is 36 grams. Capped length is 138 millimeters. Uncapped, it's 118.8 millimeters. And posted, it is, um, well, about 100 and 
60 millimeters. Uh, it has a section diameter of 8.9 to 11.2 millimeters, and the barrel is 11.3 to 12.2 millimeters. Okay, Carla, thanks again for sending me this pen. I appreciate it. Let's look at how it writes. That's what we'll do next. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. All right, writing with the Jin Hao 500. The nib is a fine medium, and the ink is diamine. Apple Glory. Let's do some writing. I have to say I'm quite impressed by the smoothness of this nib. It's a nice, smooth, pleasant writing experience, which is not bad for a pen at this price range, uh, price level. Do some fast writing. Not bad. As you can see, there's no real skipping. All right, wetness. No issues there. As you can see, for the line variation, you really have to slow down. The feet is not really designed to handle that, but even so, you can squeeze out quite a bit of line variation. You can also do reverse writing which is actually not horribly scratchy and it does seem to work out re relatively well. So I think this Jinhao 500 is actually a very decent pen. Okay, Kale, thanks for sending me this pen, I appreciate it. I hope this was useful and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.